Okay, we'll declare the meeting open. Um, I just want to advise members that there are two in the room, and that is Andy Allen and myself, and the following members are attending via teleconferencing. That is Kelly Armstrong, Jonathan Buckley, Mark Durkin, Carol McKellen, Fra McCann, Shade, Sinead Innes, and Robin Newton. Okay, can I just ask members, as usual, to avoid using their mobile phones during the meeting, and when they're not speaking, if they could put their phones on to mute so we don't hear any background noise, that would be good as well. Um, so then I'll just move straight on then to agenda, agenda item number one is apologies. Um, there are no apologies and everybody appears to be present at the moment. Um, I'll move on then to item number two, which is chairperson's business. And if I could then ask members if they could look at the table paper 2.1 which was the Chairperson's Liaison Group Guidance for Committees during the Public Health Crisis. Um, members, the updated guidance from the CLG states that committees should only meet to consider COVID-19 related issues and that if committees meet, the meetings should last no longer than 75 minutes. Are members content to note that? Agreed. All agreed? Agreed. agreed. Yep. Great, thank you. Then I move on to table to paper 2.2, which is draft local government coronavirus flexibility of council meetings regulations Northern Ireland 2020. Members, the department has asked us to urgently consider this proposal for a strategy rule, which is which is tabled item in your packs. I thought it would be best to deal with this under chairperson's business to allow the officials to brief us and leave the meeting earlier rather than having to wait around. So we have with us Julie Broadway. So um, I'm going to ask Julie if she would brief us and then I'll come to members and ask if there's any questions. Okay, Julie? Hello, thank you. Um, I'd, like, I'd like to thank the committee for agreeing to add these regulations to today's agenda and for giving me the opportunity to brief you. The regulations will be made under Section 78 of the Coronavirus Act 2020 which contains an enabling power to allow the department to make regulations in respect of district council meetings. The 2014 uh, Local Government Act makes provision about council meetings and proceedings. These regulations will relax the requirements set out in legislation concerning council meetings and will give councils the flexibility to alter the frequency of meetings and to move the phone or council meetings. Uh, the 2014 Act requires councils to hold their annual meeting in June every year and also makes provision about how and where the meeting is to be held. The regulations will allow councils to postpone their annual meeting this year for a period of three months. Because of the link between the annual meeting and the allocation of positions of responsibility, it was not considered appropriate to allow annual meetings to be cancelled completely. But we, by allowing the meeting to be held by the 30th of September, we think this strikes a balance between giving councils some time and flexibility, should they need it, to arrange their meetings by remote access, while still ensuring sharing of positions of responsibility across all parties and independents represented on the council. Uh, the regulations also, both in relation to the annual meeting and all other district council meetings, will enable councils to hold meetings remotely, including, but not limited to, telephone conferencing, video conferencing, live webcasts, and live interactive streaming. This will allow councils to be flexible in how they choose to hold meetings, and will enable councillors, officers, and members of the public, when attending meetings, to adhere to official public health guidance. Um, these flexibilities are time-limited, the regulations, will allow meetings to be held remotely only up to May 2021. Um, and the regulations will minimise risks to council's ability to continue to conduct business while still upholding democratic principles and ensuring that members can act in accordance with the most recent health guidance on social distancing and self or family isolation. Uh, the local government sector is keen to have these regulations in place as soon as possible, particularly as the time for annual meetings is uh, fast approaching. Um, it has not been possible to carry out a formal consultation on the regulations. However, we have engaged with local government bodies such as NOGA and SOLAS 
and council officers about the regulations and the department is very appreciative of the helpful comments and feedback they provided and for turning around their consideration of the regulations so speedily. So I'm happy to take any questions. Okay, thank you, Julie. I don't really have to. I don't have any questions for you. Just a couple of comments, just to say that I, I welcome this. Um, I know certainly I've had um, DUP um, various councillors speaking to them about uh, council arrangements, and I know I'd brought it up also with the minister last week in my weekly telephone call with her. Um, just to, I mean, we know that it has worked for us here in the assembly. Um, uh, albeit sometimes it doesn't look like it's working, but it certainly is working. Um, the remote uh, committee meetings and things like that, and I think I'd made the point last week as well that a lot of decisions are being made by the few when it shouldn't be. It should be the democratic process. So, look, thank you, Julie, for that. I'm going to go to members and ask them if they have any questions specific. I'll start with Abby. Have you anything you want to add to that or ask? Sure. No, Quite thank concerned. you. Okay, I'll go to your phone lines. And Kelly, anything you want to ask or add? Um, yes, I was just going to say that I'm absolutely grateful that this has come forward. I know that um, Paul I had spoken to you as chair when you were going to speak to the minister and to see if this could be brought forward. Um, I believe that our councillors and our local government officers should be protected in the way that we're being um, during this crisis. Um, can I just ask, um, obviously I'm, I'm a person with a hearing disability, um, I'm just wanting to make sure that when these regulations go through that councils are able to provide um, whatever they are, whether it's telephone conferencing or video conferencing in a way that suits their members' disabilities if they happen to have any. But I also wanted to check as well that we can encourage those councils that can to enable public access so they can see and hear their meetings in the same way that you could do if they were being held in their chambers. I was just wondering if there's anything that has been discussed with Solus or um, the local government organisations about that. Well, I think where um, all Section 75 groups are concerned, if these regulations are enabling regulations, so it will then be a matter for councils to um, decide what is the best means for them to actually uh, provide um, access to meetings while taking into account their um, equality um, duties. Okay, Kelly. Thank you. Okay, I'll move on. Carol, anything you want to add or comment on? No, no issue. I'm content. Brilliant. Johnny? Yeah, thank you, Chair. Again, this is something that I very much welcome. I raised it in the House with the Minister yesterday, and I know she, she said she would come back. Um, I, think, I think it's important. I think, you know, as I've mentioned in, in this public health emergency, when we have uh, Stormont is still meeting, we have now Westminster meeting. Uh, one of the essential linchpins in the community response is no doubt local government. And to be honest with you, I, I feel that a, a lot of councils have potentially been hiding behind the Local Government Act 2014 and, and preventing that essential democratic oversight and accountability that they need. As you have mentioned, sure, it seems to be a decisions by the few in which some of the decisions are, 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 very, are very important in terms of their uh, their extent and their impact on the community. So I welcome that. But just a few questions around this. In relation to uh, the permitting of sort of virtual meetings, as you mentioned, teleconference and video webcam, uh, the particular aspect which has stopped some of our councils from meeting uh, actually in their council building uh, under social distancing guidance as we have in the Assembly is that the, the, the criteria within the Local Government Act that you have to have an open public gallery. Um, are, are you saying that this, piece, this regulation will allow for, the, for councils to meet in their council building uh, under social distancing and allow for, as Kelly has maybe mentioned, maybe an availability for the public gallery to go online so that we don't have problems with numbers. Uh, this is a question that I have been probing with local councillors. They, they do see an ability to do this. I know some councils have met, but others are still uh, hiding behind this specific part of the regulation. And just one other point, Chair, if I may. Uh, has there been any provision or any thought, I and mean, it may be councils individual standing order, but is there potentially potential for the uh, permittance of proxy voting? Is this something that we have to consider within the Local Government Act to allow uh, group leaders of councils to proxy vote on behalf of other members who are potentially shielding or maybe don't have access to the uh, teleconferencing with the issues that many members have had? I mean, these are just a couple of questions that I would have. And in the sense, 
if this regulation passes the committee today, uh, how quick can we see it enacted? Okay. Um, in relation to the virtual meetings, these regulations really do provide the maximum flexibility possible for councils to decide how they're going to both hold their meetings and also the provisions in place to make sure that the meetings are open to the public, where it says in the legislation that meetings are to be open to the public, and also when it says that uh, information, agenda items and whatever have to be made available to the public, this can all be done by electronic means. Okay. Uh, uh, in relation to the proxy building, that is not something that has been raised yet, but it is something that we can go away and, you know, consider. Mm-hmm. And as it to when the legislation will um, come in, I mean, subject to the committee being content that there's no issues need to be brought back to the minister, we would be aiming at, to make them this week. And I know that NILGA are very keen and have asked us if it would be possible to have them in place for the 1st of May. So, you know, we would be planning to make tomorrow and bring into operation on Friday, if possible. Okay, I I appreciate what you're saying, and I I understand the the pressing nature, and and I commend uh, the work of the officials to bring this forward. Uh, You mentioned there that the need for, for example, public in the open public gallery or access to the general public, that need is being met by allowing the flexibility uh, of it being covered electronically, but just to specifically have on record, that does mean that if councils wish, they can meet uh, in their council buildings under social distancing guidelines, uh, and as long as their meeting is accessible online, that, co- that covers that part of the, the legislation? It would, yes. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you, Johnny. Fra, any comment or questions? No, I am content. Brilliant, thanks, Fra. Mark? No, uh, happy with it. I just had one question, but Johnny beat me to the punch with it. That was on proxy votes, but no, thank you for that, and thanks, Julie. Okay, thank you. Robin? Um, no, uh, I think uh, uh, certainly I had the question down on proxy voting, and I do think that that needs to be sorted out, um, how that can, can be delivered. Some votes in local council can be extremely contentious, where you have um, perhaps uh, councils where their you know electronic connection may not be as good as in some other areas, um, but I do think proxy voting does need to be sorted out, uh, or voting needs to be sorted out if it's by proxy. I suppose the only comment really is around uh, the legislation is saying until May 2021. Um, in, in the event that we find ourselves in a, a better position, would the department be coming back and helping to seeking to to um, change, go back to where we were on the legislation? I think it's a matter of we just need to assess how things are going. And yes, if it is necessary, you know, if we're able to. Um, if we're able, yeah. So, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Robin and Sinead. Any Thank you, com- Chair. No, no real issues. Just you know, I have to say, I, I sort of, I disagree with some of Johnny's commentary around the councils. I know I can only speak from experience here locally, and I know nearly more than Down Council, um, especially the councillors that I know have been quite keen to to meet and to um, to start taking decisions and to start getting getting to work and stuff. Um, so you know, I know they're still quite hamstrung by by not being able to do that. It's just really, um, and maybe Julie doesn't have the answer to this at the minute, but do, does Solis or does Julie, or do you have an, uh, an idea or has any council indicated whether they would need to postpone their ADM, for example? I think they're considering it at, at the minute, and I think there has been some discussion. Uh, some councils have already said that they're just going to plan to go ahead with their AGM in July, but to find a means through the legislation to do that, you know, you think social distancing uh, and whatever, and others are thinking about whether it might be advisable to postpone for a while, but I don't have um, any more detail than that. It's just, you know, whenever these were going through, comments that were made about the discussions that were being had. Yeah, Okay, thank you. Thank you. Johnny, did you want to come back there? Was that you? No? No? Sorry, I forgot. I thought I heard somebody coming in. Uh, So... 
Um, so are members then um, content that this rule be made then? Agreed. Yes. Yeah. All agreed. And in the room also agreed. Okay, that's fine then. Um, Julie, thank you very much for that. Appreciate you dialing in today and giving us the information. Thank you. Okay, bye. Thanks, Julie. Bye. Okay, members, I'm going to move on then to table table paper 2.3 SR 2018-98 or forward slash 98, the Social Security Fines. Deductions from Benefits Regulations, Northern Ireland 2018. Remember, these regulations were considered by the committee in January as part of the backlog of legacy regulations, and the re committee requested ad additional information at that time, that, and the response is included in your table papers. The committee was content when it reconsidered the regulations on March the 12th, but um, we didn't proceed to approve the regulations. It was a bit of a technical hitch just on our part here. Um, so I'm just asking, are members con content that this rule be made? Agreed. All ag agreed. Okay, agreed. all agreed. Yeah. That's fine. Agreed. Mm -hmm. Then I need to read it into the record that the Committee for Communities has considered SR 2018 forward slash 98 the Social Security Fines Deductions from Benefits Regulations, Northern Ireland, 2018, and subject to the Examiner of Statutory Rules Report, has no objections to the rule. Okay, members, thank you. We're going to move then on to item agenda number three, which is the draft minutes. Um, the minutes of our last meeting held on the 22nd of April are at page six of your meeting pack. Are members content with the minutes of the 22nd of April 2020 as drafted? Yeah. Chair, yes, sorry, Carl, go ahead. Sorry, Chair, it's just on her mother's horizon, an issue that I raised last week wasn't admitted. Oh, okay. um, in relation to um, some of the housing associations on which important people are in one of those camps here shooting. Okay. Okay, well, we can. Um, do you want to speak or say anything on that, or <coughs> are you okay? Hold on, Carl. Carol, I think those were some of the issues that you raised for a letter to go to the department on. Um, it, it may not be in the middle, but I can assure you that they were they were included in the letter to the they were included in the letter to the uh, the minister last week, and we can we can send you that letter as well just to provide you with that additional reassurance. But if there's a, an additional amendment to the minute, we can we can also include, include that. Please. Okay, Carl. I'm sorry, I'm trying to advise. It's hard to hear. That's I okay. Hear. I, I, um, yeah, yourself. That's okay. Kevin's just a wee bit further away from the mic than we are. He'll say it again here for you. I'm sorry. Can you can you hear me now? It's very very faint. It's like your microphone's never turned on. Yeah, I would agree with Kelly. It is hard to hear on phone. Okay, it's going to move. Bear with us one moment. No, that's because the microphones don't appear to be on. Look, I, can you hear me okay? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because I, I just have a very loud, shouty voice. Um, <laughs> what Kevin has said to hear, uh, that, it, that it was included in the letter um, that has been sent um, to the minister. But what he has said is what we can do is we, if members are in agreement, we can amend the, the minutes to reflect that. If you're happy with that, Carl, we can amend those minutes. Agreed, and then at the end, um, Chair, if you're present under any other business, we'll come back to it again on separate, same issue, but separate, um, separate All right, okay. So, um, are members content then with the draft minutes as amended? Agreed. Agreed. Okay, we'll move, okay, moving on then to agenda item number four, which is matters arising. Um, members have been provided a page 13 with a draft letter to the Minister for Infrastructure in relation to capital projects post-COVID-19. Members asked for a draft copy to be brought to the meeting for agreement before issuing. Um, so, members, it's at page 13. Can I ask, are members content or have they any comments around that? I... Sorry. Um, who's that? Sorry. It's Sinead. Sinead, go ahead, Sinead. Um, it's just in regards to the, the letter regarding support NI. Okay. Um, so it's just a couple of queries, obviously, we probably won't be able to get the answers today, but um, it's just in terms of the capital investment fund. Okay, folks, um, that's at page 15. 
Sorry? Yes, page 15, yes. Sinead, if you just hold on with one moment, we'll clarify the one at page 13 first and then we'll move okay. on to page 15. Is that okay? Oh, yeah. Or, me, no ahead. bother. No bother. Okay, so uh, just asking members the letter at page 13 first of all, which is the letter to um, Minister Mallon at Department of Infrastructure to do with the various projects and we had asked that we, uh, that we, we need to know um, any outstanding issues with that. Are members content with that letter first and foremost? Agreed. Agreed. Andy, you happy enough? Yep, okay. Right, Sinead, I'm moving on then. So, um, at page 15, there's a departmental response on queries on Sport NI funding to local councils. So, Sinead, go ahead there now. Okay, sorry about that, Chair. Um, right. So, it's just in regards to the capital investment fund, which was mentioned. Um, I would just like to see a wee bit more detail, because um, I do believe that what we need to see going forward will be some kind of um, stimulus package or investment, especially capital for, uh, for sports clubs, especially rural ones. So I, I just would like to see, um, you know, a breakdown by council even um, as to where, you know, what councils have availed of that capital funding previously and what sport and I plan to do in terms of rolling out a post-COVID, um, you know, stimulus package, you know, particularly for rural clubs. The other one was the Everybody Active um, and, you know, maybe this is just me um, re not, not picking it up uh, properly, but it's just, it's in the case of um, where it says that some, some councils uh, drew down the money in year one and then didn't draw down maybe what they were entitled to going forward because they were looking for a partnership contribution. So, you know, I'm just wondering, could that, you know, could councils be impacted by not drawing down what they what what they're entitled to, particularly um, if they're in areas of multiple deprivation. Um, so again, it's just you know it's just drilling down a little bit more and asking for some more specifics around those two issues. No, thank you, Sinead. I think you brought up some really, really good points there. I know they were some of the some of the issues that I had been approached by by some of our local councillors as well. Um, so I think yes, we'll write back and we'll ask for more more detail and make it council specific as well. Um, I think that would help all of us. Um, so sure. I'm absolutely sorry, Fred. Did you? Is that you? No, it's Johnny. Johnny, Johnny. sorry, Johnny. Yeah, Get you and Fran mixed and up for some reason, Johnny. Go ahead. I, I, I agree with what Sh Sinead has said, and actually, uh, so I'll probably a wee bit further. I, I agree we need more detail in terms of the, the council breakdown uh, in relation to each council and what was received, but also not even further to say the specific project that was supported, I think that sort of information would be helpful as well, if it was possible. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, no, that's fair enough. So our members, yeah. sorry, go ahead. Nope, nobody wants to speak there. Um, right, members, we're getting a wee bit confused here and mixed up, so if you just bear with me. So are members then content um, with the comments on page 15, and then we as a committee then write back and ask for those more specific details? Everybody content with that? Good stuff. Yeah. Okay, members, I'm going to then move on to um, page 17 um, with the, the draft committee response on the budget. Um, are members content with to note that response? Uh, everybody on the phones, first of all. Anybody there, any comments, or are you content? Chair, can I come Yes, Carol, go ahead. Um, so it was really around the housing executives, the way they laid the budget. Out last week, um, do you remember they had something like a carbon monitor took us like three options, particularly around maintenance, and one of the options was around private, private in the housing executives. Okay. Um, and and I, I just wanted to know if that come to the department in that form, and I wanted an information on it. Uh, but certainly there was, I mean, that would need to be recorded as well. Okay. We can we can do that. That's not a problem. I know that this um this has to go forward, doesn't it? Oh, sorry. Bear with me one wee moment here. Sorry. If you can hear Kevin shouting. Members, um, just to be clear, um, Carol in particular, uh, that uh, that request for clarification on that very specific point was uh, sent to the committee. La sorry, sent to the department last week. So we, ha we have followed up on that. It's been noted and, and followed up on, uh, and we're just awaiting the response from the department on that. Okay, Carol, did you hear that? I did, um, and that's fine. 
Okay. All other members content then with that? Yes? Content. Okay. Um, I just want to also under this agenda item, I haven't um, managed to get my discussion with the Minister this week yet. I'm hoping that will happen this afternoon. But I do note that the Business Committee yesterday decided that members can now ask um, two questions, I think it is, per day. Um, so uh, just no, per week. Per week, is it? Sorry, thank you for clarifying that for me. So two questions per week. So if there are any further questions that the members want to ask, um, uh, of the various ministers, of course, um, they can certainly go ahead and do that. So thank you for clarifying that for me too also. Um, so members are content, I'll move on to agenda item number five, which is correspondence. Uh, members, you'll find the correspondence memo at page 22 of your meeting pack. Um, first of all, I'm going to ask um, Andy, is he content or anything he wants to bring up? To do with correspondence? No, no issues. No issues. Okay, members on the phones, everybody content with the correspondence? Content. Content. Mm -hmm. Content. If I may come in on one of them. Of course, you can go ahead. It's Kelly here. Um, I just the, the information that came through from MTAC from Michael Lorimer about the health and social care remote sign language is very welcomed. Um, I was just wondering, um, given the fact that our Department of Communities deals with so many benefits. Is it worthwhile to have a discussion with health to see, um, or with the, the department to see if they can have a discussion with health um, to extend that type of support out to people who are applying for benefits? Um, because the deaf community quite often cannot be employed or cannot get employment because of the lack of sign language interpretation. It would be useful to see um, what application that this um, new type of scheme could have perhaps for job centres going forward. Yep, absolutely, Kelly. We will write um, back to both health and um, our own minister as well and ask those questions. Good point. Thank you. Okay, other than that, members all content with the memo? Okay. Yep, okay. I'll move on then to agenda item uh, six, which is the Westminster Pension Schemes Bill Legislative Consent Motion Draft Report. Members, you'll find that draft report at page 287. Um, you'll need to bear with us now because we need to go through the draft report section by section and this is a formal consideration before the print or the order that the report is ordered um, to be printed so if you'll just bear with us it'll take a wee, wee while but we'll get there so first of all can I then refer members to the section of the report on powers on membership at paragraphs one to three can I ask our members content with paragraphs one to three Agreed. 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 Okay. I then can I refer members to the background section of the report at paragraphs four to nine. Are members content with paragraphs four to nine? Agreed. 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 Okay. Can I then refer members to the collective defined contribution pension section of the report at paragraphs ten to twenty one? Are members content with ten to twenty one? Great. 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 Thank you. Can I then refer members to the evidence from the Communication Workers Union section of the report at paragraphs 22 to 30? Are members agreed with 22 to 30? Great. 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 Yes, absolutely. Go ahead. If anybody has to have their, could put their mute button on because somebody's making a cup of tea. Okay. So, <laughs> but it's confusing. Okay, so members... I agree, I, I can't hear either, it's a lot of background noise. Okay, um, I know I've, I've done these calls as well, um, and it is really good if you've got a mute button, and while I'm speaking or other people are speaking, if you can press a mute button, it will help greatly with, if, with everybody. So I'm going to move on, I'm going to ask first again, I'm going to ask about 22 to 30, are members all content with paragraphs 22 to 30 before I move on? You can take your mute button off. Agreed? Okay, I'm then going to refer members to the evidence from Royal Mail section of the report at paragraphs 31 to 36. Are members content with 31 to 36? Great. 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 
Thank you. I then want to refer members to the evidence from the Trade Union Co Trades Union Congress section of the report at paragraphs 37 to 44. Are members content with 37 to 44? Yeah. Great. Great. Thank you. I then want to refer members to the evidence from Unite the Union section of the report at paragraphs 45 to 54. Are members content with paragraphs 45 to 54? Great. Great, thank you. I then want to go on and refer members to the pensions regulator section of the report at paragraphs 55 to 73. Are members content with paragraphs 55 to 73? Agreed. Agreed. Thank you. Agreed. Agreed. I then want to refer members to the pensions dashboard section of the report at paragraph 74 to 75. Are members content with paragraph 74, 75? Agreed. 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 Thank you. Then refer members to the further provisions relating to pension scheme section of the report at paragraph 76 to 80. Are members consent, content with 76 to 80? Agreed. 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 Great, thank you. Then can I refer members to the committee consideration of the bill and LCM section of the report at paragraphs 81 to 93. Are members content with 81 to 93? Thank you. And then can I refer members to the glossary section of the report? Are members content? Agreed. Great. Agreed. Okay, members, that concludes the committee consideration of the report. And I need to put the question that the Committee for Communities orders the report on the Legislative Consent Memorandum on the Westminster Pension Schemes Bill NIA 19 forward slash 17 to 22 to be printed. Agreed? Agreed. Okay, Agreed. members, thank you very much for your patience there. I'll move on to agenda item seven, which is SL1, the Draft Local Government Pension Scheme Amendment Regulations NI 2020. The proposed rule at page 307 contains technical amendments that correct a small number of errors in the Local Government Pension Schemes Amendment Regulations NI 2019, the 2019 regulations. The proposed rule will not lead to any policy changes. Um, are members content with the proposed rule? Agreed. 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 Thank you. Chair, I'll declare an interest. I agree to it, but it's just I'm, I'm probably a member of that local government pension scheme. I haven't been a councillor in the last five years. Okay, that's fine. Okay. I would also like to declare that probably as well. Okay. Yeah, same here. Need here. Okay. I suppose we all have to. I suppose we probably yeah. do you have to, I think, even going back uh, 10 years ago, we were part of the Local Government Pension Scheme. So, yeah, I suppose most members that were councillors need to uh, declare yeah, an address. Well, I'll have to declare an address, not for myself, but my wife as a member of that. Okay, not a problem. All right, thank you, members. Uh, move on then to agenda item 8, which is SR 2020 forward slash 69. The Maternity Alliance and Statutory Maternity Pay, Normal Weekly Earnings, etc. Coronavirus Amendment Regs, Northern Ireland 2020. Um, the purpose of the rule at page 311 is to prevent an employee from experiencing disadvantage in relation to statutory maternity pay and maternity allowance as a result of, their be of them being furloughed under the Coronavirus Job Retention Scheme. It modifies the way in which normal weekly earnings are calculated in cases where an employee has been on furlough for all or part of their relevant uh, assessment period. Um, I think this is to be welcomed. And can I ask members, first of all, who have dialed in, is there any objections to the rule? No. I don't no. Have no, no objection to the rule, Chair, but can I refer you to the the last paragraph in the letter from Rosemary uh, Hughes, it indicates, uh, owing to the party considerations, it is vital that the rule comes into operation on the same date as Great Britain instrument, in this instance, the 25th of April. Yeah. Okay. All right, that's fine. That's okay. No problem. So, um, and also Andy in the room, you're happy enough yep. with that too? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, Chair Johnny, just yeah, go ahead, Johnny. Point. 
as Robin's pointing out, that it's past the twenty fifth. So does that does that have other problems? <laughs> I think I think we go beyond the twenty fifth of April, sure. Yeah. The results causes us problems. No, it doesn't cause us any problems at all. It has happened, and if you remember whenever we came back here um, in January, we had lots of things that had already passed the date, so it doesn't cause us a problem. It's just that um, uh, we're just slightly behind in putting it through, but it, it will not make okay. any difference whatsoever. Okay, members okay, content so with that? Sorry, can I just check, sir, has it gone into uh, operation in, in uh, GB? Yes. yes, it has. It has, Robin. Okay. That's fine. And and okay, chair. And and chair, I have what's, what's the insurance? What's your insurance that it doesn't cause us any problems? Well, if, I'm led to believe it shouldn't <clears throat> be any different here to the the the, the rest of the United <clears throat> Kingdom. Sorry, someone else wanted to come in here. Who was it? It's Kelly. Kelly, um, go ahead. I absolutely agree with this um, this rule. Um, it's it's much needed. It means then that if he's gone off on any of those leaks, so, um how's there so sadly considered. Uh, but I'm just wondering, for those people who are on maternity leave um, and are 90% pay, I just wonder if we could write to the department to get clarification if their 90% pay will be based on, the, you know, if before this came in. So if somebody who's just recently um, headed off on maternity leave before this came in, are they on 90% of their furlough or 90% of their full wage? Okay, we'll get clarification on that, Kelly, that's fine. Okay, members, are you content then that I read this into the record then? Yeah? Yeah. yeah. Okay, that yeah. The, okay, that the Committee for Communities has considered SR 2020 forward slash 69, the maternity allowance and statutory maternity pay, normal weekly earnings, etc., coronavirus amendment regs, Northern Ireland 2020, and subject to the examiner of statutory rules report has no objection to the rule. Okay, members, we're going to move on to agenda item nine, which is SR 2020-67, the discretionary support amendment number two, COVID-19 regs, Northern Ireland 2020. Um, these regulations are at page 321 and were debated and approved in the, the House on Tuesday, the 21st of April. Are members can, of the committee um, content to note? Great. Great. Okay. And then moving on then to agenda item number 10, which is any other business. Um, I have something I want to bring up under any other business first and foremost. Um, I, uh, I know following on from last week's meeting as well, and I had spoken to the committee clerk to Kevin about this on Friday, um, about the implications for our local councils um, going forward financially and otherwise. Um, and I had asked him to make contact with Solace um, to see if Solace would be willing to come up and giving, uh, give us a briefing about the impact of COVID-19 on local councils, which has been timely given that there's been various announcements by local councils in recent days. So uh, 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 members, would they be content that we arrange a briefing from Solace um, within the next couple of weeks um, just to get a, a steer from them as to how all of the 11 councils um, see themselves going forward, what their position maybe will be come the end of June or come the end of summer, um, given the various um, issues around rates and income for councils, amongst other things. So would members be content with that? Okay, Pratt, who was that? Sorry. Say your name. Sorry, um, Johnny, I have a lot of background noise. So can... Okay, Johnny, um, go ahead. Sure, no, I wholeheartedly agree with what, you, what you're saying, and I think that that's important. Uh, and they, as many of the council's uh, revenue generating powers and, and ability has been decimated in COVID 19. Is it possible with, with that breaking, or, or can we receive the information in relation to, uh, in, in the document, as to the actual financial position of the council beforehand? Well, that Is would... that possible, or, or would that come as part of that breaking from Solo? I would say that we will receive probably a paper beforehand before the briefing from Solace. And, you know, I, I think I, the, my idea behind it, certainly on my part, was to, you know, ask the councils to be as honest as possible with us as to what their position is going forward and, you know, what help, if, if any, that they are going to require going into the future. Um, so I, I, I would imagine we would get those, that, that sort of information, Johnny, prior to the meaning of that yeah. answers your question. Yeah. That, that it does, and, and just one one other point, and, and, and if we can maybe add it to the agenda for that item of solace, 
I think as we've watched, some councils potentially differentiate in, in relation to the services provided during COVID-19. Uh, I, I think it would be time-worthy for, for us as a committee to hear from uh, those chief executives represented in Solace as to how they're trying to provide sort of a unity of, of approach uh, to in, ensure a, a common message uh, across the board, as we were seeing with waste standards, for example, and I'm well on record as to, to my position on that. But, but I feel that uh, some councils, uh, in the terms of the differenti differentiation in their response, has led to a lot of confusion, confusion across the board. If, I was, if that was possible, just to add that item for discussion, and it's not just about waste, it can be about many other services as well. No, that's fair enough. Um, that's okay. yeah, can I come in? Yes, absolutely, go ahead. It's Kelly here. Um, I was going to actually ask, last week we had a paper that had a proposal in it from the department on an allocation of money on quarter one for councils that was coming out of the coronavirus budget. Um, I'm not 100% certain when that would be confirmed or explained to the councils. Um, so I'm just wondering if we can maybe get an update from um, the department on that. I know that there's a budget debate happening next Tuesday. Uh, or Tuesday the 5th of May, sorry. Um, so I'm just wondering the, the amount of money that, that was at, or we have seen, um, how, how has that been communicated to councils? Because I don't imagine it's going to meet all of their costs. Yeah, no, we will ask for that information as well, Kelly. I think that the, 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 the most information we have uh, possible will be best for us, and it'll be best for us to, to help those councils as well if we have that all of the information that we require yeah. during the briefing. Um, no, thank you for that. Any other members want to make any comment on that particular point before I, I move on and ask Carol what her uh, issue is? No, nope. happy enough with Solace coming and brief us? Yeah, agreed. Okay, right, Carol, you wanted to bring something up under AOB? Yes, thank you, Chair. Um, it's this issue around the support and people comes. I have had an increasing number of families who have contacted our MPs and other MLS and councillors whose loved ones are in care homes or even in phones. There doesn't seem to be anybody managing us, nobody in charge. We're getting asked to bring cheap impacts in. Um, and it's, it's quite worrying. I mean, this is actually more than just, you know, some people getting support people from for this purpose. This is around the health and well-being of our wonderful and frail and elderly. Um, and I do think we, we, I would appreciate it if we could write a letter to um, the North Ireland Forum for Housing Association. And they ask their members what they're doing, and also I would like a copy into the housing executive on the department. Yeah, no, that's we can certainly do that. I've also received some correspondence, and I know the supporting people budget in itself, um, it, uh, albeit it was ring fenced for a number of years, didn't really see that real time uplift in their budget, and I know they were struggling as it was. So I think um, a bit more information on that um, uh, on, a, on a wider level. Um, would certainly be helpful. Nope, thank you, Carl. We'll do that. Um, sure, could I, could I raise a point, John Dreyobi, whenever you finish with this? Yes, topic? go ahead, Johnny. Uh, if, if in relation to the supermarket priority database, that, uh, as a result of COVID 19 and the pressures that were placed on um, supermarkets in relation to priority queues, etc., it was agreed across the UK that the approach would be that um, government would supply a vulnerable database to the supermarkets to allow them then to, to target the most vulnerable and place them on priority queues. The information has been coming apparent that Northern Ireland is the only place that hasn't been able to do that yet. Uh, the database hasn't reached supermarkets and this on due delay has caused a bit of concern regarding uh, getting uh, goods and services towards the most vulnerable and partic in particular elderly. Could, could we potentially as a committee write to the department to see what the issue is here and to see if we can speed up this uh, access to this database uh, from the committee's perspective, would that be possible? Yeah, that certainly is possible. Now, it is my understanding, and I think the Minister answered this in the Assembly um, a couple of weeks ago, um, that it is it is primarily because we have a different system here in Northern Ireland, um, and therefore the information cannot be shared because we have 
uh, well, we, we, we have four health trusts and then the ambulance trusts, so those trusts are unable to share that information. It's a different system to other parts of the United Kingdom. And um, from what I've been hearing in, in, over in GB as well, that it actually the system has not worked as well as what we think it has worked. Um, so, but certainly we can write again to the Minister on that and also to, uh, I suppose, then to the Minister for Health, um, because that is where the information is coming from. It's coming from the health trusts. Absolutely. Um, so coming, yeah. it, it, I, I think it, it has been more of an issue to do with the health trusts rather than um, the Department for Communities, but certainly I'm happy enough to pick that up again. Um, but I just would, I suppose, just remind members that the system in, in, in GB has not run as smoothly as we think it has. Um, there has been problems with it as well, um, albeit it has been a better system than what we have had. Um, so that, no, that's fair enough. If that's okay, Johnny, I, we'll certainly do that as well. Okay, members, anybody else? Um, any other business? No? Everybody happy? Yeah. Good. Yeah. Um, Andy, are you anything that you want to bring no. up under any okay? Grant. Okay, members, I'm going to move on then to agenda item uh, 11, which is date, time and location of our next meeting. Um, just want to advise members that there is uh, very little business at the moment that is relating directly to COVID-19. Um, and I know that I'm we've discussed there briefly about getting solace in. That will take, I would imagine, at least uh, two weeks or a week or a week to two weeks for them to get the information from councils together to come back and brief us. <coughs> so at this stage, what I'm proposing is that we hold our next meeting on Wednesday, the 13th of May, which is two weeks today. Of course, if something urgent does come in or something that needs to be addressed by the committee, we will we will meet before that. But are members content at this stage that we uh, then provisionally um, propose to meet on Wednesday, the 13th of May? Members Great. agreed? Great. Mm -hmm. Good stuff. Okay, members, thank you very much. One yes, it would. Well, no, we will get back to you, Robert. We don't know for definite because it's all based on time slots. Each committee are given time slots. So we'll know okay. near the time, but members will be, um, certainly will be alerted to the, the time and room and everything else. Um, so, Chair, yes. Chair, can I just ask for that meeting? I know that um, the assembly or the the apartment building's IT team are looking at how these um, meetings are held um, remotely. Yes. Um, I know this is the first I've actually been on a remote meeting, and I have to say that the sign from the other um, phones is brilliant compared to the sign that's coming, unfortunately, from yourself and the clerk. Um, it's very, very quiet in that room. Um, hopefully, by the 13th of May, we'll have a better system that um, <coughs> see each other as well as hear each other. Yeah, no, I, I understand that, and uh, we were, we're hoping that something will be resolved by then also. Um, we, we, we can hear you all very well in the room, but um, I understand uh, that for some reason you aren't really able to hear us too well, but we've managed to get through it okay. Um, and thank you, members, for your patience during the meeting. And, uh, thank you, and Chair. Thank you, and I thank do you. Thank you. the meeting thank close you, then. Thank you. Thank you. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Committee Room 29. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Committee Room.